Hello everyone and welcome back to Mass Appeal with Kansas City T-Bones manager John Massarelli. Mass Appeal is a weekly program that gives you, the fans, the opportunity to ask the Kansas City manager questions about the T-Bones, baseball or sports in general, or just seek John's wisdom about life events that are going on. In this week's episode, John provides to us some team updates that are going on. He discusses what he would be like if he was the commissioner of baseball for one day. And John answers a question about how you keep a marriage together when the husband's traveling a lot. Let's get right to Mass Appeal. So let us welcome back manager John Massarelli live from Kansas City with us. John, let's first of all begin with your team updates for us. What do you got, Rob? What do you got? Mike Kickman. Kick him. Threw pretty well last night. One of those games, uh, in Georgia tell you, it's easy to manage when you're on my side. Of course, this guy did very well too as a rookie. Um, but nice, nice start by Kickham. Hopefully, we we'll see more of it. Uh, Jimmy Mahika, we signed him. Short term right now. Uh, we ha we had a need uh, for an extra infielder to give. Uh, hopefully, uh, Jimmy will be with us a while, but I'm not sure if he will or not. Uh, got some his wife's having a baby and he, so he's dealing with some issues at home so hopefully he'll be around Anthony Gallus uh, came back off the DL up with the bang yesterday with two home runs I uh, think his labor issues are behind him uh, he's on a new program uh, and kind of re-energized and refocused hopefully that continues uh, signed Tyson Gillies coming off a hamstring injury got let go out of the Atlantic League uh, Still a little tight. We played him a couple days. Uh, showed some signs. He felt a little tightness, so we were being a little cautious with him. And then with the wet conditions out there today, uh, we're kind of backing off a little bit and kind of being very cautious with him. Before we head into our fan questions this week, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about the turnaround of Jake Blackwood. Starts out kind of struggling early on in the season, but has been on fire for you lately. What is the difference you're seeing in his game? Well, I think it's just getting into, you know, hitting's up and down, as I'm sure Jake will tell you. Uh, I think he got off the same type of slow start a little bit last year. Uh, and then Jake kind of heats up with the weather a little bit. Uh, as it gets, that's what older guys do. <laughs> when them joints start to get loose, they start to, to loosen up. So Jake's a consistent professional hitter, and uh, it's not a surprise that he's uh, been leading our team lately. Heading into our fan questions this week, we'll first of all begin with Lucas from Kansas City. He says, as you come into a series or homestands, do you look for a certain record? Like, do you start a seven-game homestand expecting you will take five of those games or even setting that as a goal before the homestand begins? No, I've never bought into that. It's always been the one game. I've never said, you know, hey, we got a seven-game homestand. Let's win five out of seven. So when are we going to lose? Uh, you know, so we've won four in a row. Now we're going to lose a game just so we get our goal. Uh, to me, it's to win every night. If you're going to rattle off 10 in a row, then you better not be setting standards that uh, we're only going to win 5 of 7 on this home stand. So, nope, one game at a time. John from Oklahoma City would like to know, I can't understand how a guy like Burt Reynolds can have so many home runs right off and not be chosen by an affiliate team. Can you explain that one to me? Well, first of all, it's a, it's a competitive game. Uh, and the affiliates have good players too. And so they're not, they're not looking unless there's a need right now. Uh, so, I mean, they they could help him in Burt Reynolds in the off season. I mean, Burt's a five-tool guy uh, that's been an affiliate and failed. So, you know, he's having some success right now, and I'm sure what, if an opportunity arises where there's an opening, I'm sure he will get looked at. Billy from Kansas City would like to know, who do you think is your team's MVP so far this season? Uh, I mean, that's tough to say because we haven't played real well. Um, you know, Jake's probably been our most consistent run producer. Uh, Haynes has been outstanding out of the pen, as has DeLuca. Uh, but there's a lot of guys that are just coming in. You know, we're 40 games in. They're just starting to get get their feet under them, I guess, so to speak. So hopefully that will continue. And after game 70, I'll have a better idea of that than game 40. Hal from Lawrence would like to know, you said last week that you leave the dugout expecting to be ejected in some games. What are you looking to do when you try to get ejected? Well, everybody in baseball knows there's golden golden words you can say to immediately gain an ejection. Uh, most of them start with the pronouns, you. So as soon as, I, as, soon as I, you're a, uh, you, you know you're going to get ejected, especially if it's a veteran umpire. 
Are, is there something? Is this kind of just to send a message for your team that hey, look, I'm I'm with you kind of thing? No, there, yeah. There's just certain baseball times when a call's made and everybody, everybody, at least on the baseball side, knows. Oh, he's gone uh, on that call. It's just it's tough for me to explain. <laughs> Next up comes from Mel from North Kansas City. He says, Skipper, your Cavaliers won the NBA title. The Indians are red hot. Can you send some of that good fortune the Browns way? Mel, the Browns are back. Hugh is going to lead them this year. They're, they're going to be the surprise team in the uh, NFL, I believe. That's good for Browns fans to hear yes, something Yes, it like is. <laughs> Tom from Old Laugh would like to know, listening to you talk about Pete Rose was your idol in, the, in sports growing up, how do you feel about him not being in the Hall of Fame? <laughs> good question. Um, you know, I can say is every day I walked in the same clubhouse Pete did and saw that Rule 21 staring at me in the face uh, that told me the repercussions. And and I'll say this, be politically correct, when, when she when Shoeless Joe Jackson gets in the Hall of Fame, then let's start talking about Pete. That makes good sense. Richard from El Dorado would like to know, if you were the commissioner of baseball for one day, what is a rule that you would change to see something different? Get rid of the designated hitter. Play the National League rules all the way through. I like, I like at least, especially from a management standpoint, how it changes the game. It changes everything how you manage a game completely. So it's a totally completely different ball game when you have a, a pitcher hitting uh, and no designated hitter. So that's what I would do. So I assume that Rob Manford's kind of looking at wanting a DH and even then the NL, you're not a fan of it. No, 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 I don't like it at all. I just, it, to me it's boring. At least from a managing, you know, I, I know you can still enjoy the game and it's baseball, but uh, it's so much more interesting to watch a National League game. A lot more strategy, I would think, right. for sure. Uh, Jerry from Kansas City would like to know, I like when players smash a pie in the face of a guy who just had a big hit or pitched a great game. Has that ever happened to you? And if so, are there pictures? <laughs> I played before photos, I think. And I don't think they're pies. Now it's Gatorade. Everything's Gatorade. Uh, we didn't do that unless we won one at all. <laughs> You didn't get a Gatorade bath unless you won the whole thing. Now they do it and you win a game. So it's different than 20 years, 30 years ago, 20 years ago. But nope, I don't think I've ever had. I've had shaving cream in the face. They did shaving cream. So no pies. But no pictures. And no pictures. Oh, that's, that's a shame. Sorry, Jerry. Uh, Barry from Kansas City would like to know, where would you rate Ned Yost in terms of top managers in the major leagues? I ask because it seems no one is ever mentioning him as a top manager, and I think he has done an amazing job with that team. I would agree. He has done an amazing job. He took so much criticism in the early years with Kansas City when he had a young team and hasn't, got, hasn't gotten nearly the credit uh, when he's had success the last couple of years, the patience he's shown. I think the answer to that question is you, you, you look – how many managers in baseball history have gone to back-to-back -back World Series? And when you put that list together, you're going to find Ned Yost in some pretty good company. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you there. Mitch from Cameron would like to know, I don't understand why every player in baseball does not try to bunt on John Lester. That guy can't throw to first to save his life. <laughs> well, I haven't watched enough Cubs games to answer that, but I know, I know the scouting report of him about that. But... I'd agree the games change where they don't, it's kind of like hitting against the shift. Uh, a guy's weak against the bunt and guys don't exploit it. Uh, it's the same reason why, you know, why don't hitters hit the other opposite field when they're shifting the field on them. So that's something the modern day player just doesn't, uh, doesn't do anymore. And I don't know, I don't really have the answer why. Zach from Kansas City would like to know, why is it so bad for younger kids to throw a curveball? I don't think it had any effect on myself or my brothers. <laughs> I think if you went in any pitcher that we consider we call a thumber in pro ball, a guy that works off his breaking ball, that's 27 years or older and you asked him to extend his arms with his left one to his right, and if you couldn't pick out his throwing arm, you'd be a fool because one of them is going to be about three inches shorter than the other because they can't straighten it all the way. Uh, throwing breaking balls, it just it wear, it limits the extension on your arm. 
and your, your arm doesn't get out there fully extension, and it wears on a, on a pitcher. You don't see it on younger guys as much, but you do when a young guy's throwing breaking balls and never develops his fastball because his arm doesn't get to full extension. He doesn't create that arm speed anymore. Uh, so that's why it's bad. To me, you shouldn't, shouldn't throw a curveball until you're probably in high school. Just develop a fastball change. Let your arm fully extend, fully develop, get close to full grown, and then start worrying about a breaking ball. I never actually heard that before. Go look. Go at some of the, there's plenty of them in this <laughs> league. Go ask them to extend their arms. You'll be able to tell which arm they throw with very easily. Because one of them, the non-throwing one, is going to be a full extension. Look at mine. I mean, <laughs> and I don't even throw curveballs. Can't look at mine. On the podcast, <laughs> but let's talk to you. We wouldn't be able to do that on the phone. Since we're face to face. <laughs> Next up comes from Ben from Tabika. He says, I hear all this talk about pitchers throwing at batters. I wonder what you believe should be the appropriate response when a guy throws a 98 mile an hour fastball at you. Well, I think everybody understands intent. And so when they intent or reputation, and it's something that's changed obviously from the 60s or even the 80s and 90s, it's developed. Now it seems they get upset if you just throw inside, which shouldn't be the case. You should be allowed to throw inside. But I think it's intent when they, when they feel like you're throwing up high and in. Uh, I mean, the appropriate response should be immediate ejection uh, without warnings. So, and I think umpires are doing a pretty good job of that at the big league level. Would you say that you could clearly tell when somebody's intending to throw at somebody else? I think you can if you've been in the game and understand situations and you see how guys are releasing the ball. You can tell when a guy's being wild and missing. You can just tell by body language a lot of times what the intent is. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's to me it's pretty easy to tell. It seems a lot of times the pitcher's response to hitting somebody tells you kind of too, is that? Exactly. I mean, I, you read the body language very quickly. Uh, and the players read the body language very quickly. Next up we have Carl who says, Skipper, do you find that when there are social issues that are stirring the nation, like what happened in Ferguson, that it is hard to keep those kinds of things out of the locker room? <laughs> I can remember many political uh, conversations going on in the locker room as a player when, uh, uh, when the Clarence Thomas stuff was going on in the 90s. Uh, Kenny Lofton was my teammate, and he, he's very uh, politically energized. And he and I used to have some big discussions about that, uh, where it carried over. He's actually rooming with uh, my wife and I when we were married, and her and him, he would get into some serious political discussions. So, yes, yeah, so when you're hanging out with guys, you know, 24 7 on the road, it doesn't stay out of the locker room. We talk about other things in baseball. Next up, we have Meg from Kansas City who would like to know, what is your favorite part about the 4th of July? <laughs> well, it's not fireworks. I see them every Friday night and Saturday night, it seems like. But, oh, I think it's just the nostalgia of it, of, you know, playing the, playing the game, of the country's game in the summertime when it's, you know, everyone thinks of baseball on the 4th of July. And I'm fortunate enough to be on the field to, doing the entertaining it so to speak so just the history of it excellent our last question uh, comes from a person identifying herself as troubled wife so John gets <laughs> to pull out his couch today do you or your wife have any good tips on how to help a marriage to stay close when her husband is away because of his job my husband travels so much and I feel like things are not like they should be Wow um, my wife calls it re-entry for me when we're apart for you know 30 days or so because of travel and I come home and she has she has a re-entry phase she calls it where I'm not allowed to touch anything or do anything that enter, when entering in her world again but no we just come back and uh, have our date nights and that's about uh, and communicate we do a lot of talking when I return to kind of catch up get into my routine and then once I'm into her routine again then I'm allowed to <laughs> say re-entry's over and she, had, she has me retrained how long does that take normally <laughs> normally about six days six days for her to retrain me 
That's excellent. Thanks for joining us this week, John. All right. Thanks for having me, Rob. We want to thank Manager John Massarelli for joining us on Mass Appeal this week. If you have your own questions you'd like to ask the Kansas City T-Bones manager, please send them to us at askjohn at minorleaguesportsupport.com. That's askjohn at minorleaguesportsupport.com. Please have your questions ready for us by Thursday evening so we can give the skipper a little time to review them before we record the show. I want to thank you for joining us this week. I'm Rob Panier, the managing editor of the Minor League Sports Report, and we'll see you next time on Mass Appeal.